the cardiologist explains that he has done everything correctly and the patient indeed requires an angiogram that is the doctor himself is dictating that i have done everything properly what i'm telling is you need to undergo angiogram but the patient tells him that he cannot take decision unless he talks to his family doctor okay he want to take his second opinion with his family consultant with this the cardiologist is offended and he click straight away tells that the patient he does not wish to see him any longer okay so this is the scenario the patient has come to a cardiologist cardiologist has done the primary evaluations which turned out to be normal then he done the evaluation under the stress test that is the exercise stress test and it found to be a positive so what he recommend is the patient should undergo angiogram now from the patient perspective patient tells sir i want to take the second opinion i want to show and uh, take the decision based on my consultant okay the family doctor who is of uh, with his family for last 20 years because he told he want to take second opinion the cardiologist got offended and he straight away cancels the patient and asks him not to see him any longer okay so this was a scenario so now the point you need to discuss is trust in the doctor patient relationship rights of the patient duties of a doctor does the request for a second opinion provide sufficient ground to terminate the doctor patient relationship okay i want someone of you to answer the first question the trust in the doctor patient relationship means was there any breach of the trust in this case of scenario yes anyone was there a breach of trust or no yes there was no breach of trust okay the patient still had the trust on the doctor that whatever he has told or whatever the examination findings the cardiologist has uh, given him okay the cardiologist has given all his uh, findings that he need to undergo angiogram so there is no breach of trust but the right of a patient what is his rights does he has to believe whatever he tells or he can have a opinion that he can consult to the other person yes does the patient have a right to only listen what only one person is telling he has to undergo some other reassurance yes he there is a trust between both of the consultant and the patient but still the patient need not to take decision on alone yes last time we had seen the rights of the patient yes the patient should be given a chance to take the decision yes in our second module the rights of the patient the patient has all the right to take the decision whether he want to do it whether he want get it done or he want to have a second opinion then he decides that is decision making so he has all the rights to take the second opinion yes yes cardiologist has given the right option but it doesn't mean he can just to throw on the patient telling you need to undergo okay it is not the doctor alone who is going to decide yes doctor has given a proper advice that he needs that is need for the ra he has to undergo the angiogram but still the patient can have his right to decide then second part of that duties of doctor what is the duty of doctor in this case he should give chance to the patient yes and also he should give right suggestions also like for example when the patient tells sir i want to uh, take the second opinion of my consultant 
then what will be the duty of a doctor he should reassure that yes you can take this but don't uh, take too long of time okay you have less amount of time whatever decision you want to make please make it early okay like for example you want to schedule angiogram tomorrow then you give him the timing so tomorrow we are planning we are having a time schedule of this slot like for example 2 to 4 where we can give uh, angiogram to you if possible you get your uh, decision made by evening with your consultant so the duties of doctor is to give the right information and also support the decision of the patient okay whether you want to get it done and also it doesn't mean that you should straight away tell okay you don't come to me please go with whichever doctor you want okay so the doctor should explain the patient improperly okay whether how urgency is it also okay if it is too urgent then obviously you should tell him in advance yes you consult your consultant but make it fast okay the time required or the time to decide will be very short for example here person is not in myocardial infarction but he was in myocardial infarction then there will be no time also so you have to make a critical decision then later further intervention yes the patient once he is recovered from the ischemia then he can be given chance for the uh, decision making okay next does the request for the second opinion sufficient to ground to terminate the doctor patient relationship not at all okay just because patient has asked sir i want to have a second opinion doesn't mean you need to terminate the doctor patient relationship you cannot tell the patient please get out of my office you don't listen me then you don't come to me you cannot talk like that okay you need to give all the rights of a patient the patient should be treated properly the patient should be given all uh, information what is required like for example if you are running a angiogram uh, institution but the patient want uh, thoracic surgery okay cardiothoracic surgery which is not in your facility in such situations what you will do will you not give the uh, suggestion that you have another option called as cardiothoracic surgery and you can get it done that one instead of uh, angiogram alone so you need to be shifted to other hospital you need to give the proper options or you will think that okay fine patient is requiring cardiothoracic surgery but that facility is not in my campus so if i send him to other place then i am not getting revenue so what i'll do is i'll see only my revenue i'll do angiogram and let's see whatever happens we'll take care or what is your situation you have to give the proper options whether it is available in your center or not is secondary but the information to the patient should be given properly and you need to tell which one is best for that situation so that patient can have a right decision and just because patient told he want to get a second opinion doesn't breach the trust so you need not to terminate the doctor patient relationship yes if patient tells sir uh, i want to get it done somewhere else then obviously it is your duty that you need to give a proper discharge summary with the findings so that the other consultant can take care of that okay so th with this the case uh, scenario we have seen okay doctor patient relationships in the past okay how was it it was paternalism and because physicians in the past were the people who have higher social status and doctors are seen as sacred occupation which saves people's life and advice given them by them are seen as paramount mandate because at that point of time there was no much knowledge or the medical knowledge among the public so the only source of information the only source of the uh, disease was through only doctor so because of that thing the patient or the people gave the paramount uh, privilege to the doctors but in the current scenario yes in the current scenario things are different okay in the current scenario the doctors are not the only one who can give the medical advice okay you have multiple sources 
there are plenty amount of data which is available in the free internet where person can read himself but it, it doesn't mean that they can become doctor okay just by reading a book the person cannot be a doctor but the information or the uh, medical data can be received from various sources okay so that is the shift what we are seeing in current so current are it is like consumerism and mutuality yes you have to see your patient as a patient also and your consumer also you are giving some treatment and he is taking it so he is your consumer and it doesn't mean only one side it's mutual you are giving him the this this uh, options he is making his decisions on your page okay you both are, should be on the same page it's a mutual and patients nowadays are higher educated and better economic status so they are already educated they know what the things are and it is the concept of patients autonomy patient can decide his decisions on himself also it is not only the doctor previously how was it doctor will tell you need to undergo an angiogram patient will tell what is good to me you do doctor i'll just uh, listen to you but the scenario is different now now if you tell patient that you need to undergo angiogram before he turns up to you next another half an hour he'll go and read and come yes he'll go back he'll read what is uh, angiogram what are the indications what are the contra indications on google and everything and he'll comes back to you and he'll make his decisions again so the concept of patients autonomy you have to give the patient an authority of what he is deciding so in such situations what happens for example tomorrow something bad goes okay it's not intentional but still there are conditions where nothing can be done that time the patient will feel that it is not the doctor alone who made the decision i was also the part of the same so he don't blame doctor for the things he he will be on the same page he thinks that everything whatever we have decided we have done correctly but still it landed up into something wrong and next ability to question the doctors yes a patient has a full right to question the doctor for example you as a doctor giving dextrose to a patient iv the patient has all right to ask you why doctor why you are giving me the dextrose when i can eat orally okay so a doctor can be questioned at any point if for example you you will tell that okay fine you have to get admitted today and we'll observe the patient can ask you why you want me to get admitted and what are the things you are going to observe in me yes whatever the particular disease might be you have advised the the patients can question you for anything okay you ask them uh, come fasting in the morning for blood sugar level the patient can ask you why i have to come fasting so you should be able to answer why so patient has all the rights to ask any question so this is the present scenario okay the doctor patient relationship has come from one sided uh, command system that is doctor decides what is good for the patient to a system where the patient and doctor both will decide what is good for the patient okay means patient is also part of the decision making is the primary change in the current scenario so after this what are the things which can improve this relationship okay what are the things which will improve the relationships what are those one is active listening the doctor should be active listener next non verbal communications like for example if patient is telling something he is feeling bad and you give a facial expression where you are so much happy then it's not a right thing so it's a non verbal communication you are how you are showing your expressions okay it doesn't mean that if patient tells uh, last week my grandmother expired so you should not start crying along with him okay but still you should have that uh, non verbal communication over your uh, physical appearance then empathize okay if patient tells uh, sir i am having this all problems so empathize with the patient and educate the patient okay for example if he has got diabetes mellitus then you should educate him what is it why it has occurred and what are the things he need to do to control himself yes 
that is self education of the patient you should educate the patient so those all comes under the improving this relationship then reassurance time to time you should reassure that nothing will happen everything will be taken care for example he is on your follow up for example a chronic illness is non non communicable like diabetes mellitus hypertension so they will come to you for 3 months 6 months 7 months after that the patient will lose the confidence in himself that he can control the disease or the hope of being well is reduced the patient might start feeling hopelessness that might again trigger for the depression that he feels he is having some disease and he is going to die etc so reassurance is also important part of the communication you should time to time you should reassure and re empathize and agreeing on the treatment plan both doctor as well as the patient both has to agree on the treatment plan and taking responsibility as a doctor you should take responsibility of the health of a person or the patient and as a patient he should take responsibility that he is going to follow what is been medically advised by his doctor and avoid over reacting okay if uh, as i mentioned if patient uh, uh, tells something wrong or bad thing then you should not over react or patient has some made mistake like for example he immediately fell in on your floor or he has thrown a pen over your desk so you should not over react and you should establish a boundaries okay the establishing a boundary is very important with the uh, medical fraternity because uh, there are so many issues with the uh, non uh, establishing a boundaries okay you should know what are the uh, thin line of demarcation between you and patient okay patient might be coming to you as only patient okay so you should have a established boundaries okay next uh, module comes is the communication so as i have told relationship can be brought by two things one is verbal communication and non verbal communication with the patient so verbal communication also plays a most important part of the patient doctor relationship okay how you are going to build it so communication is a fundamental prerequisite in the medical profession and bedside clinic skills to ensure a professional success of any doctor okay so communication skills can be divided into various steps first initiate the session that is how you are going to initiate to talk to your patient okay it should not be like patient has come and sat next to your table and you are just waiting him to talk okay you should initiate initiate the session by establishing the primary rapport that is identifying the reason first you ask what is your name then ask why you have come do you have any problems then he will start explaining what are his problems so initiate it it should not be like what happened why have come here the tone of your question should not be such a way that the patient feels offended and he should not feel that he has come to a wrong person okay it should be smooth and also soft enough that patient feels comfortable to start conversing with you comfortable to explain what he is going through okay so initiate the session then gather the information once you start the uh, initiation then you gather the informations his age where he resides what are his symptoms from how many days he has like for example he has a cough then you should ask from how many days he is coughing is it more in the morning or in the evening did he use any uh, prescriptions from outside to suppress this uh, cough or is there any triggering factor after eating some uh, fruit or something he is getting the cough or is he having breathlessness so gather the information okay initiate the session gather the information once you start doing that automatically you are going to build a relationship with your patient he feels i am come to a right person and he will start explaining what he is feeling then you give the explanation and planning okay once you understand what is the symptoms 
once you uh, come to a, a differential diagnosis then you give proper information okay that is explanation what he might have what are your plans to investigate are you going for investigations are you going directly for the treatment plan on the uh, patient symptoms or what are your short term and long term goals for the disease for example you have identified person as hypertension then what are your plans what you are going to advise him what stage the patient has come to you is he early stage hypertensive or is he late stage or he has come with some complications so those all things explanation and planning has to be given to the patient and then a closing session okay all of a sudden you cannot abruptly ask the patient okay fine this is a prescription leave okay that is not like that like for example you you are traveling to some country and you are going by flight will the uh, are you going to have landing also yes you have take off also you have landing also so same way when you are communicating with some patient you should have take off that is initiate the session then gather the information then you identify the disease then explain him okay till that time it is the patient who is giving you information now once the explanation planning starts it is you who are going to give the uh, treatment plan for the patient and a proper closing session also that you are going to reassure the patient nothing will be going to be wrong or what is the condition of patient is and then you have to close it properly okay in these two pictures which is the right way of communication with the patient yes are you going to give the medical records to the patient and you will tell this is your disease i have written you the treatment please go or is this the way where you are going to show him the report and you are going to explain what it is and what is his uh, condition is currently what is the right way of communication explaining yes explaining the yes you have to explain okay you have to explain the patient what he has okay because if you send the reports to the patient then patient is not satisfied with the service what you are giving what the patient do patient will take this report and he'll go to one more doctor what happen in such situation there is no proper rapport between the patient and a doctor so that is the reason why patient escape from you and he has gone to someone else so the proper way is instead of bombarding with the things which he don't understand instead of that you personally explain what is the condition okay this is the picture where it clearly shows what is the poor rapo means like okay a doctor is busy in focusing the charts the focusing the reports of the patient instead of seeing the patient himself okay like not listening to the patient's concern the patient want to talk something but doctor is already busy in uh, seeing the patient's report and taking calls for other patients okay so this is a very poor rapo depiction of poor rapo a right rapo should be you should explain okay you should give time to the patient rather than giving time to the investigation okay you should not be busy in seeing his reports rather than asking him what has happened okay sometimes reports can mislead you okay reports can mislead you so always first give ear to what the patient is with okay patient is with then you can have a reports in your hand reports you can see any time once you have a proper uh, uh, interaction with the patient you have built a rapport with the patient then you have examined him then you tell the patient okay fine just give me 2 minutes and go through your reports also then i'll talk to you what could be the reason why you are feeling like this okay you take the permission for seeing the reports rather than 
just you are giving your ears to patient and you are concentrating on only reports okay always make sure you make the time between the conversation you tell the patient okay i have examined you i have done all the investigations also and give me some 2 minutes i'll go through your investigations also and i'll come to you what is the interpretation of those reports what what is the change in such scenario the patient will feel that doctor is not only seeing the reports but he is also listening to me okay most of the time patients come to you because not he is coming to you for the first time he has he would have gone to many doctors before he has visited your clinic he has come to you thinking that you are not the same like the others you are going to give ears to what he is complaining or she is complaining so that is the primary thing what you always keep in your mind communication then your prescription okay prescription sh should be readable by anyone okay prescription should not be like only the person who writes it can guess it okay it, it should not be like that the prescription should be neat and clear enough that any person including the patient should be able to read what you have written in on the prescription pad okay so this is a wrong depiction where you are going to write in a such a pattern where no one can understand what is the findings what you have enlisted in the prescription pad next you should always avoid the jargon okay then always keep patient or family members informed okay whatever it might be small thing large thing admitted patient or outpatient department whatever it is always make sure that you are you are keeping them in the loop it should not they should not feel that the doctor or the consultant is not at all informing us anything okay so that should not be that should be always taken care of the patient as well as the patient party that is the family members should always be kept in informed okay they should be in the loop that they know each and every updates what is required for them so this will reduce our ignorance breeds fear and fear breeds hate and hate breeds violence if the doctor or the consultant don't inform like for example you can imagine a person whom you know is in the icu for two days and what is going on inside you don't know anything but a nurse is coming she is giving you prescription asking you to get the drugs which are costing you 10000 per day and two days are over like this only the third day what is your situation don't you get angry because you are not informed anything instead they are asking you to pay only the bills uh, pay for the drugs you don't know how is the patient you don't know what is the condition of the patient is he serious is he normal or is he recovering or whether he is dead inside or is he alive or these drugs are given to my patient only or not so you have hundreds of question in your brains so always make sure you keep them informed so that is the first law okay always keep the patient and family members in the loop because what happens is if you ignore then the patient party who is sitting outside will be in fear slowly that fear turns into a hate thinking that you are just paying the bill and these people are not doing anything inside and if something goes wrong what will be the reaction a violence okay violence over the hospital fraternity so this always keep patient and family member informed next patients are always in vulnerable position okay you you cannot uh, uh, depict that patient is always enjoying the facility what you are giving they are always in the vulnerable position yes 80% of the medical student fail to introduce themselves adequately and explain their intentions in a studying involved okay there was study so this is common okay whenever like for example when you go for second year also you will be going for uh, bedside clinics you will be going to take the uh, patient history when you go to the patient you always ask what is your name but you never tell 
or introduce yourself okay that is the scenario what happens if you don't introduce yourself what the patient thinks he is being interviewed by a unknown person he don't have the rapport with you you might be asking 100 questions but still he will not have a rapport because when he don't know you he don't care about you okay so always make sure you introduce yourself with whomever is speaking whatever any platform whether you are talking on the uh, forum or you are talking with the patient or you are talking with the patient party always make habit that they know who you are that is you need to have a proper introduction of yourself okay next never tell patient or a, a person who is coming to you as a case okay if you tell as a case then it shows that how irrelevant or arrogant it you appears like okay always treat the patient as a human being okay don't uh, label them as a case next listen to the patient okay listening to the patient itself can build a communication what does this picture tells you yes is the doctor talking to the patient or the patient symptoms no the doctor is busy in reading the blood investigation rather than seeing the patient what he has okay what he is commenting your cholesterols are really worried actually what is worried is he has been stabbed by so many arrows instead of treating for this he is very much worried about his cholesterol levels so what is this picture is showing if you don't listen to the patient then you are actually doing a wrong thing okay it's a simple if you listen to patient you will know what is actually problem he has been hit by so many arrows so you have to treat for that rather than seeing to the patient or listening to patient you are busy in reading the things what is most irrelevant for the situation okay so you might want to actually look at the patient what is important is listen to your patient and often patients always have more than one complaints okay patients will always have more than one complaints next most important thing is breaking any bad news okay when you are breaking any bad news always make sure there is setting okay that is environment or the place where you can break the bad news it should not be like in between of so many people you are breaking out the bad news to particular patient like for example uh, two uh, parents have come to you and they are not conceiving a child okay and you have you have come outside the hall and you are telling them in front of so many people that you both have instability and you will not have babies so that is the wrong step okay that is the wrong method you are going to break the bad news you should take the privacy of the patient into consideration you should call them Cons then you can explain what is what all you have done what is the findings and what are the reasons and then you reveal the what is it the bad news you have to reveal then perceptions okay what they know then what are their expectations then you should give the information and knowledge some amount of empathy that you feel or you are both on the same page and summary okay so that is the things you should break the bad news then what are the barriers yes this might come as a three mark question what are the different barriers in communication the doctor barrier to effective communications like either doctor do not have the specific knowledge or doctor do not have the counseling skills okay he don't know how to counsel or there is lack of time okay doctor doesn't have the time for the patient or the doctor do not have appropriate resources to communicate to the patient okay so these are the barriers for effective communication patient okay to a patient these are the 
different barriers. Okay, what are the patient barriers? That is gender. For example, if it is a female patient, she will be hindered to talk to a male uh, doctor in some situations. So the barriers for the patient might be the gender also or social and educational levels. Like for example, people uh, might have a, a inhibition because of the social status or the educational levels. They might have a barrier for effective communication or language itself. A doctor do not know Hindi and the patient is talking in Hindi. So what is the barrier here now? It's the different language. The patient is expecting that doctor should understand that the language, but doctor don't know the Hindi. So there is difference in language or membership of a ethnic minorities that might be caste, creed or something like that. There might be barriers also. For example, a patient of some religion going to a doctor of another religion. So they might have some hindrance to completely have an effective communication. Yes, they'll go for a doctor as a doctor. They'll go there, they can talk. But sometimes what happens, they'll have some issues with the communication. They might not have 100% efficient, they'll talk. They might have some effective communication, but it cannot be a 100% sometimes, okay. So with this, we'll be finishing today's class on communication. Okay, how to break a communication, how to, what are the steps in the communication? Yes, you have to initiate, then you have to take the appropriate knowledge, then what are the bad things? So these all things need to be taken care. Okay, when you are having a effective communication. Okay, so with this, I'll be winding off today's class. I hope everyone have understood the patient doctor relationship and uh, communication what are the barriers of communication on both the sides that might be a doctor or a patient side okay so with this i'll finish my class yes any cl uh, clarification is required i hope there is no questions on this yes Okay, fine. Thank you very much for your patience listening. I close my class. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much.